I've got a guilty secret. When my husband's away from home, I can never be bothered to cook. I head to the freezer for my favorite pizza. Quick, easy, and 15 minutes later, I'm in cheesy heaven. But then the guilt kicks in. And you remember that video you saw telling you that ultra-processed foods are worse than smoking. They cause cancer, they're bad for us. You've downloaded an app and now you're scanning every barcode to see if something is good for you or not. Now I'm a surgeon who's had cancer three times. Do I really need to stop eating pizza? I wanted to find out just how bad ultra-processed foods are and whether they really do cause cancer. But first, we need to know what an ultra-processed food is. You've heard the headlines, you've seen the scary stats. Here's the problem. No one can actually agree on what an ultra-processed food is. Is a microwave lasagna in the same category as sliced sourdough bread? Are Oreos and oat milk equally bad? Before we can talk about the health risks, cancer or chronic disease, we need to talk about definitions because right now, the way we classify food makes no sense. According to the NOVA system, which is used in a lot of modern food research, there are four groups. Group one are unprocessed foods like fruit, fish, milk. Group two are processed ingredients like sugar, salt, and oil. Group three are processed foods you could make at home, like jam, cheese, and bread. And group four are ultra-processed foods, or UPFs. These are foods made in factories with additives, emulsifiers, artificial colors, or preservatives. They have long shelf lives and are normally sold in packages and like a piece of fruit. Now that sounds sensible at first, until you realize that yogurt and bacon are both on that list. So are flavored waters, protein bars, margarine, and sliced bread. They're all lumped into the same category, even though they affect the body in completely different ways. It's like putting a salad dressing and a tub of frosting in the same health category because they both have several ingredients. And here's why that matters. If researchers are using this category to study disease risk, and it's this blurry, we could be blaming the wrong foods and missing the real danger. So before we get to the cancer claims, we need to get clear on what ultra-processed really means, because if the definition is broken, so is the data. Can we really trust the research that links them to cancer? So there are studies telling us that the more ultra-processed food we eat, the more likely we are to get cancer. And one study found a 19% higher risk of ovarian cancer, but we'll come back to that in a minute. So what is the truth? Do ultra-processed foods actually cause cancer? If your yogurt has live cultures and your bread is seeded, does that still increase your cancer risk? It's the question behind so many headlines. So let's unpack what the science actually says, starting with the scariest numbers. So in 2023, a huge study published in The Lancet looked at more than 250,000 people across Europe. It found that people who ate the most ultra-processed foods had about a 10% higher risk of cancer especially from things like processed meats and artificially sweetened drinks. And that sounds terrifying until you break it down. The average woman's lifetime cancer risk is about 40%. A 10% increase raises that to 44%. So that's an extra four women in 100. Not 44, just four. And it's not all ultra-processed foods. Breads, cereals, and plant-based products, there was no extra cancer risk. But there's one stat that does keep making the headlines, and it doesn't look good for women like me. A 2023 study found a 19% higher risk of ovarian cancer in women who ate more ultra-processed foods. Now that does sound scary. Will one in five women who eat white bread and microwave meals get ovarian cancer? But let's look at the numbers again. Your lifetime risk of ovarian cancer is about 1.4%. A 19% increase takes that to 1.7%. That's three extra cases per 1,000 women over a lifetime, not the one in five you first thought. And that's before we ask how much ultra-processed food would you need to eat to see that increase in risk? Is it once a week or every meal all year round? And crucially, these studies are observational. They show us patterns, but it's not proof. They didn't look for other risk factors of ovarian cancer, like exercise or obesity or genetic causes like the BRCA gene. And if you want to find out more about cancer risk, check out my latest book, The Cancer Roadmap. 
So while these studies are interesting and they make great headlines, they're certainly not enough to make you stop eating ultra-processed foods for good. So yes, the risk of cancer is real, but it's very small. But it shouldn't be a reason to panic about every packet of soup or slice of bread, because here's the part nobody talks about. Not all ultra-processed foods are bad. I'm a bread maker, but I still can't make a decent granary loaf. Some ultra-processed foods can help you live longer. Some just make life easier. Curry paste, mayonnaise, and some, they're just pure joy, and that matters too. After my mum died, my dad struggled to cook for himself because mum had always done it, and ready meals from the local co-op were the answer when he wasn't coming around for dinner. And I worried, but actually, I'd rather he was getting protein, carbs, and vegetables every night than just eating a cheese sandwich. Both of those are ultra-processed foods, but one is much better for him. And that's the point. It's not about banning every food with an ingredient label. Now we know snack foods overloaded with salt, sugar and fat. They're not good for us. They should be the occasion, not the rule. But things like whole grain bread or live culture yogurt, still UPFs, still technically bad, but also full of fiber, protein, nutrients, and hard to make at home. So no, your diet doesn't need to be 100% organic, sugar-free, whole food perfection. You just need a sensible plan. And this is mine, Dr. Liz's three F's rule. 80% of what you eat should be fuel, real food that nourishes you. If you want to reduce your risk of getting cancer or reduce the risk of it coming back, most meals should be based around half a plate of fruit and vegetables with a healthy protein and fat source and some whole grain carbs. The World Cancer Research Fund has reviewed all the evidence. And let's be honest, deep down, we all know this is what we should be eating. 20% of what you eat should be fun. The crisps, the cake, the bacon sandwich. And 1% is the fuck it the things that get you through those days when everything else falls apart. For me, it's the days when I'm having a cancer wobble and I need to eat a packet of cookies binge watching Bridgerton on the sofa. Remember, you're not a nutritionist. You don't have a personal share. You don't have an open wallet. Sometimes life gets in the way and you only have 12 minutes and a microwave to feed your family. So instead of obsessing over, is this food ultra processed? Ask, is this worth it? Pick the healthier option when you can. Because this was never about chasing perfection. Forget obsessing over every food label. Forget asking, is this food ultra processed? You don't need to. Yes, ultra processed foods might increase your risk of cancer by a very small amount, especially if you're eating processed meat and alcohol. We know that. But here's what the research doesn't always tell you. Living in fear of food has a cost too. It steals your energy and it fuels guilt and it turns something as simple as lunch into yet another way to feel like you're failing. Here's the bigger picture. Eating a packet of biscuits once a week, hell, even two or three packets of biscuits isn't gonna give you cancer. But if you aren't exercising regularly, you drink alcohol and you smoke cigarettes, that will increase your risk. Life is too short for food guilt because food isn't just fuel, it's comfort, it's culture, it's how we socialize and celebrate. Enjoy that bacon sandwich, just not every day. If you've got a question about food and cancer, let me know in the comments and remember to subscribe so you don't miss my next video. I'm Dr. Liz, thanks for watching.